dear daughter Morgana, I will probably be dead when you discover this message. During the excavation of the Louvre, I have discovered a lion-shaped ewer and some engraved ivory tablets. It has taken me years to decipher them. It would seem that the author was Anselm de Beauvais, a 14th century wizard. Listen to me carefully. At that time, Philippe the Good destroyed the Order of the Temple. He seized their treasures and burnt the Templars at the stake. Some of them, the Black Templars, swore to avenge themselves and sold their souls to the devil. They forced Anselm to cast a spell on four objects based on the four elements of the apocalypse, which they call Satan's keys. A bull, a vase with a needle on top, a statue of an Assyrian demon, and a Persian ewer in the shape of a lion. Once brought together, these cursed objects will bring chaos and destruction to the earth. Such is the Templar's revenge. It seems that Anselm stole the ewer from them, the one which I discovered. I know that the Black Templar's Brotherhood is still in existence. They are looking for the four objects, and they want the ewer that is on show in the Louvre. I have always said that it was dangerous to leave it in a simple glass cabinet. These fanatics are always seen as harmless cranks. Morgana, you now have a risky job. Go to the Louvre, get the ewer and destroy it. You'll at least have done one thing for me in your life. In 1981, the Richelieu Wing, which had been in the hands of the Ministry of Finance, is given to the museum, and the Grand Louvre is born. Between 1984 and 1986, two sites are excavated. This is when I find the lion-shaped ewer and the ivory tablet. But this does not feature in the official history. What is remembered is the discovery of the medieval ditch and the notorious glass pyramid. Now it is hoped to put the collections into the Richelieu Wing, to extend the underground passage and to redesign the gardens. To my mind, if the Black Templars bring about the apocalypse, there is no need to carry on with the restoration work. There won't be anyone left to perform it. So it's you, the one who must come. For the sake of Christ, a woman? Anselm's prophecy spoke of a savior, not of a wench. What on earth's going on here? Well done, Morgana. You know the saying, fools rush in, but this is a really strange angel. Wake up. You have been sent from above to save the world from the Black Templar's revenge. Without you, it will be the apocalypse, death and destruction. And on it goes. It's just like being in a bad CD-ROM. In any case, saving the world has already been done 2,000 years ago. And that finished on a cross. Try to understand, girl. 
I, Guy de Sombreval, seeing that my brothers wanted the apocalypse to avenge the destruction of their order, met with an old wizard called Anselm, who had seen in the stars that a savior would come here tonight to spoil this fiendish scheme. I let myself be taken by Philip the Good's men and sacrificed my life at the stake. Thanks to Anselm's necromancy, I became a ghost. I waited for you for over 600 long years in order to teach you how to destroy the objects of the apocalypse, Satan's four keys. You alone can do it. Now that I am dead, I have no power left except to open the doors of time, thanks to this magic jewel. I am going to send you to the reign of Charles V. There, you will find the other three objects that are coveted by the Black Templars. The bull, the eagle, and the demon Pazuzu. Mm, he has a big problem with women, Spookface. Wait a minute. The Black Templars? Well, well, he's telling me about my father's message. Silence. I am sending you to the year of our Lord, 1377. At that time, the Christian world was divided and the Great Schism was near. An ideal time for the Black Templars. All their possessions have been confiscated and Satan's keys are in the royal treasury in the Louvre. One of their men has just turned up. He is the Pope's legate. Yes, these demons have infiltrated the Holy Father's entourage. Find the cursed objects before him, then we will destroy them. Anselm has indeed hidden four plinths able to neutralize these keys, but the Black Templars murdered him before he could tell where they were hidden. Do not fear, and go through the doors of time. Be careful. I do not have total power over time and matter. When you travel through the temporal spheres, there is great risk of losing some of the things that you carry. Under Charles V, the Louvre becomes the king's residence. The king builds prestigious apartments, a magnificent staircase, and a library in the Falcon Tower that houses some 973 works. He also landscapes a pleasure garden to the north of the Louvre. There he can rest and discreetly receive dignitaries when he wants to resolve delicate negotiations. Let's not forget that, at that time, we're on the brink of the Great Schism, that the Church is divided, and that this is seen by many as the first sign of the fabled apocalypse.
Sire, the Holy Father pursues the Black Templars, and he sent me to demand the four satanic objects from you, in order to put them under his divine protection. They have been in your royal treasury since being confiscated by Philippe. I humbly beg you to hand them over to me tonight, so I can be on my way before dawn. Indeed, we have the eagle and the bull, but we have heard nothing about the lion. As for Pazuzu, if he has evil power, it must have been locked away. There is a manuscript that tells of such secrets. Let's try to gain time. Go and get the satanic keys in the treasury with a clerk. As for us, we will look for this manuscript in our library. Master of the horse, go to the library. The king will hand you an important manuscript that you must bring to me in the treasury. And don't forget to give him St. Blaise's relics. They are a gift from the Pope to gain his support against the Avignon rebels before the Great Schism. Savior whose arrival was announced by my ancestor Anselm, but by the hairs on Lucifer's back, a woman? I thought Anselm had talked of a man. I'm filled with terror because this is an ominous sign. Well, here is a powerful spell. It brings to light what has no appearance, for this place is full of dark mysteries.
power again. I must be losing my mind. Well, I've forgotten to tell you of Basilius the Great Manuscript. It can only be opened with a key, which you can see at the bottom of this still. But it is very rusty and needs to be cleaned. We need a rose and saffron paste and a little spirit. Oh, where on earth have I put all these items?
Here you are at last. As agreed, we hand over the encoded manuscript to you. Take it to your master, the legate of our beloved Holy Father.
Guards, get hold of that man. We will have to question him. Spook face, what came over you sending me to see those armor-clad idiots? Tell me how to get out of here at once. I see that you have failed. You have not got all the objects, and we do not know where the four plinths are. There is one solution. To send you to a time when the Black Templars are again about to act. The year 1610. Only fourth has just been murdered. Christianity is divided, and all is confusion. But be careful. There is a Templar in the Louvre who pretends to be a Jesuit, but really wants to steal Satan's keys. Now go, go back into the depths of time. For Henri IV, the Louvre was the symbol of a new monarchy. He decides to extend it with a small and a large gallery that link it to the Tuileries. Patron of the arts, the king houses a number of artists in the large gallery, among whom, incidentally, was a clockmaker, who designed a mysterious clock for him. But this hive of activity is interrupted by the murder of Henri IV in May 1610 by Raviac. The murder of this king of Protestant origins suited several of the factions, and may have prevented a rekindling of the religious wars. Religious wars which some contemporary writers saw as the first sign of the apocalypse. Your Jacqueline Descamont, aren't you? I'm gonna rearrange your pretty face, my lovely. We know about the intrigues between Vernoy and the redhead Raviac. Now talk and tell us what you know. 
Oh, have pity, my lords. The redhead claimed to be God's messenger. He wanted to see King Aldi end his fight with the Pope. He also talked to me about some keys, but I didn't understand a word of it, for the man was raving. <laughs> Good grief. The wench has fainted. We'll go and check what she said with the guardsman. If she's lying, we'll skin her alive. to carry out my ancestor's prophecy? Very good. But be careful, Ravaillac has just killed good King Henri, and suspicions are bound all over the Louvre. Monsieur de la Force tortures those who he thinks are guilty of regicide. Do you know that the Queen herself, I've heard it said, might have had a hand in it? And you, with your cute mermaid's face, you look very much like Jacqueline Descormins, who helped the killer. I can smell danger around you, Morgana. Here is a powerful spell invented by Anselm. You will go everywhere, like a spirit that can pass through walls. I've also started to make a potion for you. It will allow you to put to sleep all those stupid footmen who nose about in the corridors. Do not trust them. Their brains are in their pants and that's all they ever think about. But I lack two ingredients, one metal and one plant, in order to complete this potion. Snore like an old mare. One last thing. Beware of the demon Pazuzu. It is an horrendous creature. It has been called the god of the evil winds because it has the power to rot the very air and transform it into a deadly infection.
The son of the late King Henri will soon become Louis XIII. He is praying by his father's statue. Let's not disturb him. He is distressed and you know how badly he is afflicted by epileptic fits. Your Majesty, my sacred order is sending me on the trail of an evil brotherhood, the Black Templars. These enemies of the Holy Cross intend to inflict death and destruction across the earth in order to avenge the ruin of their order by Philippe the Good. They need four evil objects, which are called Satan's keys. We know that you have at least two of them, an eagle-shaped vase and a bull statuette. I implore your majesty to hand them to me, for the evil ones are everywhere. Ah, I know what vase you are talking about. It occupies a place of honor in the ambassador's room. But do you think that you only have to snap your fingers to get it? This splendid work of art, che la bellezza. I forbid you to touch it, miserabile. My Lord Chamberlain will escort you back to your quarters immediately. Your Majesty, I am amazed the trifling answers you have given to my questions. This is a crime against Christianity. Leave me alone. I am well able to find my quarters without help from your footman. His breath stinks of oil from Florence. Ah, Jacqueline, cara mia. I see that you have escaped from the clutches of De La Force. Que porco! Madame de Vernoy, my good friend, entrusted you with a missive addressed to our dear Duke d'Empernon, but he never received it. Praise God that it was written in invisible ink. Go and look for it at once, my lawyer Jacqueline. Come on, forget your airs and graces. Come rub yourself against me. I fancy you so much I'm becoming hunchbacked.
to me, my dark-haired one. I guess that you are not welcome here. You could call the guards, but while you're being tortured by the Marquis de la Fosse, you won't be of any use to me. Let's make a deal. I will translate the Latin inscription, and you will give me what I want. You don't really have time to learn Latin. What do you say? I say that you can go and shove your Latin lessons up your... Of course I agree. Have I got any choice, Your Eminence? Hmm, let's see. Yes, I think I understand. Here is the translation, my lovely. When the dead demon looks at the red and powerful evil, he will come back to life. sent you. But this very peculiar mask makes me suspect that you deal in sorcery. Will you be able to help me in my inquiries about the death of my father, King Henri? I do not trust anyone, for a vile plot is being hatched. Help me, and I will not be ungrateful. Mm. Here's a young man who knows how to do business. Well, I accept my little prince. Please, draw me a book. Listen, I'm looking for a bull-shaped foundation nail. If by any chance my royal partner had seen anything of it, it's quite possible. Your royal partner will wait for you in the king's bedroom, madame. Throw some light on Réveillac's heinous crime, and you will receive princely assistance.
And madam, don't you have some little thing for me? I advise you to hurry up if you don't know what to rot in the Van Sen dungeon. I'm Jacqueline Descoumont, at the service of the Marquise de Verneuil. I saw her and the Duc d'Epernon plot King Henri's murder. I was their messenger. One of their missives was on to me when I was arrested by the Marquis de la Force's men. I hid it somewhere in this room and... My God! Oh.
for this missive. It will shed light on the murder of His Highness my father. The future King of France will not be ungrateful, madame. You are looking for a ball-shaped foundation nail? My father attached great importance to it, for cows are represented on our family coat of arms. This object, madame, is locked in a clock built by Monsieur Gauthier, a skillful clockmaker, to whom my father granted lodgings in the large gallery. Gauthier designed a very strange mechanism that locks a secret drawer. Monsieur de la Force's inquisitors are, as we speak, questioning him in the gardens. Thank you. 
The Escoman whore has taken flight! By Christ, let's get her! Gods! to blow up half the Louvre to get out, but I've only brought back one object. What have you got in store for me now, Sherry? Ah, oh, for a second time you have failed miserably. On some old friend, what should I do with her? I must send you elsewhere in time, to the year of our Lord 1770, when the revolutionary spirit is stirring. Soon there will be murder, murder and anarchy. From this, the Black Templars will profit. These snakes are everywhere, particularly among brand new brotherhood. The Masons. Go and find the Marquis de Namur. He took part in an expedition to Mesopotamia and knows many things. However, take care, because he belongs to the Black Templars. You will have to pretend to be his ally. Use your charms, Eve's daughter, for I believe he likes fine wenches like you. In the 16th century, the work commissioned by Francois I and Henri IV represents the Louvre's golden age. But everything comes to an end in the 17th century, when Louis XIV decides to reside in Versailles. In the 18th century, despite some minor construction work, the Louvre, now abandoned by the court, is no more than a vast madhouse, full of artists, prostitutes and idle noblemen. Even Voltaire regards it as outrageous. On the eve of the revolution and its subsequent upheavals, the Louvre is in a very sorry state. Strange attire. I don't know where you come from with these hellish clothes, but there's gonna be fireworks. Here, you're not gonna pinch my customers, are you? You like it? It's Secret Service of Couture. Pure latex, totally free of animal fats. Yours if you help me to pass unnoticed. I have a customer who'll soon be here. A real moron from Brazil. These clothes might well be just the thing. Have some spare change by any chance. I will sing for you. You won't be sorry. It calls him the whores. Yes, harlots and whores. I love all the more cuddles they give me. I want to, but not free. Cause my little club. What a horrible racket! I've got to stop that row right away! Turkish bath. 
I ask you, my young friend, can you smell that underarm odour? Oh, how I miss the Schoenbrunn air. Here comes our beautiful traveller. You don't recognize the Louvre, I'll bet. Our oh, science threatens the old necromancy. They take me for a freak. Hardly anybody listens to me these days. Materialism and money have taken over the world. Here there remains only the last of the artists, scientists and aristocrats. The court has left. Politics and secret societies rule everywhere. Masons, Rosicrucian Brotherhood, and goodness knows what else. You will need help. Try to gain the favor of the Marchioness von Schoenhausen. As a society woman, she knows the upper crust in this madhouse. Wait, somewhere here I have a precious necklace, a good bargaining tool with the old flirt. Many thanks, you old dear. You and your two ancestors have been a great help. Well, you will have a family likeness. Yes, we are all Anselm's descendants. Unless I am Anselm himself, who knows? Here, my child, here is a new Kabbalistic incantation. It is powerful, and it awakens dark forces. You will need it, for strange things are happening here.
mean, you can't pull the wool over my eyes. I'm not the sort of person who mistakes a hen for a cock. Would my young servant be a young lady by any chance? It's crisis time amongst the minions. Yesterday a maid, today a manservant, and in two or three centuries the saviour of mankind. Madam, help me. I want to see the Marquis de Nemours. Nemours, my dear, it's very simple. He adores music. Play him a little tune from Bastien Bastien, for example. It's an opera by young Mozart. Fourteen years old when he wrote it, how very clever. That'll bring him out of his hideaway, the old bear. He lives right here, but believe me, he also adores money. I know what I'm talking about. <sighs> Find some pretty clothes and he'll lose his head to you. He loses it so easily. Here, take this key to a cupboard where I've left a few dresses. Not so long ago, he was sniffing at them as if they smelled of honey. <sighs> How charming. Celestial music played by an angel. Such harmony. Few know its value. Who are you? Sublime Marquis, it's enough for you to know that my adoptive lodge sends me to look for an Assyrian statuette. Pazuzu, the demon of the wind. You know Mesopotamia since you've been on an expedition there. Tell me what you know, brother. Hmm, I see that we pursue the same goal, to find the statuette that was once lost. All right, I will help you. All that I know is written in the expedition's records that will soon be used for Diderot's encyclopedia. There you will find a picture of Pazuzu, as well as a few notes about him. Some scientists have managed to restore the statuette, but the notes of their experiences have been lost. I do not know how this could have happened. I have often talked about it with Jerome Delahaye, the sculptor who lives on the ground floor of the large gallery. Go and ask his advice. We belong to the same lodge. And then tell me your findings. Au revoir.
My name is Duplessis. Joseph to all pretty ladies. Excuse me, I'm late. My paintings are not yet ready for the exhibition, and the brushes do not paint by themselves. Good day to you, Your Grace. Do you want to buy some of my work, or do you want to model for me? Hello, brother. The Lodge of the Nine Sisters has sent me, and I have a letter of introduction from Monsieur de Nemours. I need you to make a mold for a statuette. Very well. Do you have a drawing I could use as a model? But first, my dear, you can also help me. I'm desperate to have a portrait by Christophe Allegrain that's on view in the square drawing room, but I can't afford to buy it. If you bring it to me, I will make your mold very quickly. Ah, that portrait would be even more beautiful if it included the Masonic symbols, the chisel and the mallet. As a sculptor, I'm very fond of them. You again! You're more beautiful than Rubens' models. If I wasn't so busy, I'd gladly show you some of my favorite strokes. We can talk about it. I quite like the picture of Christophe Algrin, but it is missing two small details. Would it be possible to paint in a chisel and mallet, Joseph? But how can I refuse you anything, dear angel? Bring me the picture and you will see the kind of hand I can make our old Christophe hold. What joy! It's just as I wanted! Don't you think it's an allegory for a Masonic sculptor like myself? Now, let's see the drawing of Pazuzu I'll use as a model. We can now proceed. First, I must build a wax model from your drawing, then cover it with clay. This is then fired in an oven. The clay hardens as the wax melts and flows out through the small holes. We then have a mold into which we can pour the molten metal. Here is your mold, my dear. Alas, I must leave you now. I have been observing you with interest for a while, my dear, and I am sure that you will forgive my manners, for they are worthy of you. To tell you the truth, I suspected you immediately. 
You are interested in Puzzle Doom? I can't wait to hear what you have learnt. Go and finish your researches and we will continue our little talk. Beware! If you try to deceive me, you will be sorry. Here we are, Spookface. I found them, your trinkets, all four of them. <coughs> Let's just destroy them and send me back to my own time as we agreed. A thousand thanks, my little one. You have done very well to help me in my revenge. <laughs> Stupid woman. I am the leader of the Black Templars. I needed you to go and get the keys. I could not do it myself because I am dead. Less dead, however, than those whom you killed, believing that they belong to my brotherhood. Do you know that you have got rid of the true defenders of mankind? Well, now I am sending you back to the 21st century. My manservants will come and take from you the four objects of the apocalypse. The mission given to me by Satan in 1314 in front of Philip the Good's stake. The sacred mission of revenge is finally going to be fulfilled. Death and destruction. Thank <laughs> you. 
These plants are the four forces of Satan. If you put keys on them, it will be apocalypse and destruction. Yes, Morgana, we have become ghosts, thanks to old Anselm's three descendants who practiced black magic on our corpses. Sombreval, this Templar abandoned by God, has well and truly deceived you. He made you believe in the existence of the hidden plinths, so that you use them when the time comes. But he has also deceived all of us for centuries. All of Christianity has pursued the Black Templars. In fact, Sombreval acted alone. Popes, kings, emperors have fought a brotherhood that did not exist. He spread that rumor so that mankind will live in fear of the apocalypse. The vile Templar discovered that Anselm had hidden the lion. He tortured the old man, but he died without talking. Philippe, the goods men, then stole the other objects from the Templars. Then Sombreval chose to die at the stake and used Anselm's secrets to become a ghost. Thanks to the magic brooch with which one can go back in time, he waited for the arrival of the Savior announced by the prophecy. He used you to find and activate the four cursed keys. Sombreval must be stopped or he will be at it again, because he is now as immortal as the devil himself. Find his grave. It is within this room's foundations. Use the magic brooch and go back in time to the year of our Lord 1314, when he went to the stake and destroy him. Anselm chose you because you had the power to do it. Your name is Death, Morgana. The end of the 12th century and Paris is being threatened by the English. Philippe Auguste surrounds the city with a wall, but he has to stop on the River Seine. At this vulnerable point, he decides to build a fortress. This is the origin of the Louvre. At its centre is a huge stronghold that becomes the symbolic heart of the French kingdom. But this heart is also merciless, beating with the blood of the enemies. For this stronghold is also a prison, the most terrible prison of all. Oh, my head. What happened to me? I must have passed out. A magic brooch. And what else? And that silly old goat. He looked pretty ridiculous with his little fluo brooch. I wonder why I dreamt all that.